All right, this is deja vu. Not for me. Well, no, not for you. For me. Yeah. Um, why? Well, we did this show yesterday, and um, we had a lot of great topics. There's a few more topics that came up today. But what had happened was I um, I was doing, you know, we have this new program that we've been using that's pretty good. I only use StreamYard right now when I'm doing live shows, and that might stop as well once I figure out how to use the new program with uh, with streaming, which shouldn't be too hard. However, I haven't done that yet. But the new program that people have been liking, people have been commenting on it and, and digging it, I have to put a setting to make sure that it doesn't do this echo sound. So I did that. However, I adjusted the wrong one and didn't realize it until it was too late because Koi and I, we did the show and we could hear each other the whole time when we were talking. But what I didn't realize is that you guys couldn't hear me. So 45 minutes into the show, I noticed it and I tried to Frankenstein it together. Sounded ridiculous. However, I did put it on Patreon and apparently everybody loves it on Patreon. So, I mean, it's, it literally is just Koi talking. Now I know you're going to say, what's the difference? Stop it. Stop it. Koi, Koi had some fantastic points. He had some great points. It was a lot of fun. It was a great conversation. So you can actually just hear all of Koi's points on the Patreon episode. They might not make a lot of sense as far as the context of what's he responding to. And then there's a few just like him going, yeah, uh-huh. And then he laughs, and then it cuts into another point. It's a ridiculous episode and very fun to watch. You can watch it on Patreon. But luckily for us, Winston was available today. So I said, hey. Why don't we just do a live episode? So that's what we're going to do. So the live episode today, we will cover. Uh, it looks like Madame Webb is going to be even more of a stinker at the box office than they thought it was initially going to be. Uh, is it really th that bad? Koi didn't even want to deal with it. Koi's camera just cut out and he left the stream. That's how bad. He doesn't want to deal with it anymore. He just left. So we'll see if we, we get him back. Uh, Joker 2 is coming out. And Todd Phillips talked about that. Fantastic Four has a cast. Um, Lois Lane, Rachel Brosnahan is talking about the role. That's exciting. So we got a lot to talk about. That's just a, that's just a few things. X-Men, the 97, that, that trailer dropped. Invincible dropped. I mean, there's, there's tons of stuff, guys. Tons of stuff. And because we're live, we're going to take questions from you guys. We, we always do the live show on Mondays, but we never really do a capes. Winston and I did a capes a couple weeks back, but the three of us never do it. So now is your chance to start throwing in those questions. We are going to be here until the end, until we get the very last question. So start throwing them in now. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Make sure you do that. Join the Patreon. You get more exclusive silly episodes like we did last night, and, um, and we get certain goals when we hit them. So that's about it. Let's get to it. It's Capes and Cows. It's me. It's Winston. It's Koi Jandro. The gang is together. Kind of. But yeah, we are. Here we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Capes and Cows, the live edition. It's myself. It is Winston. It is Coy Jandro back again. I think I put you over here. There you go. Perfect. I like it. Um, Coy, I was just talking about him in the episode. You got I got to send you the link for Patreon. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm really curious what it sounds like me monologuing with the occasional like muted interruption because the conversation was a dialogue and it was great. <laughs> and uh, well, half of it's available for you. I tried, I tried, I was like, I was, as I was going through it, I'm like, you know, maybe I can cut together me, I can cut myself doing a new thing where I'm asking you the questions and kind of Frankensteining it together. And I'm like, this, it will take me, by the time, it'll take me like 12 hours to do this. And I was like, thank God, Winston, you were available to do this today. So we could just do a full episode. But you didn't. It's like the biggest week of news, too. It's like we no. got Deadpool, we got the Fantastic Four, we got X Men. It's a lot. And then that's not the time to add I, a Frost Nixon together. Look. Oh. It's it's I'll I'll be honest. It's my fault, man. Like I I discovered uh, last year with fantasy football that when a bunch of collusion tried to happen against me from everybody else in the league, I, I unleashed my own Scarlet Witch, like brother voodoo, uh, like 
powers and I just reality warp stuff. So without meaning to, while I was on set yesterday, I screwed up all the audio and messed up the episode. So I had to be here for this week's episode. I wasn't going to let y'all talk about the fantastic forecasting. I mean, that's bullshit. Yeah. We've only been like, you know, waiting for an official confirmation six months of a cast we already knew. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I don't know. I saw some, I saw a strange comment that said, are you doing a full episode of Madam Web? God, no. Why would we do but, that? Madame Weeb. Yeah, no. Someone said, "Are you, you? Why are you doing a full episode of Madame Web?" Said, Who in guys? The world? We got to do that spoiler talk on Monday for the seven said, people no, that want to watch it. Who in the world said we were doing a, a full episode of Madame Web? Take it easy. Um, <laughs> but we are going to talk about because we're going to do the same thing we did yesterday, which was we started it off with one negative and then we got into a bunch of positives. Um, Winston, did you wind up going to see this movie? No, right. No, I, I I am very excited though. We've decided because we didn't have uh, I've, I've been on set this week, so uh, we're spending Valentine's Day uh, tomorrow. We're okay. gonna do it tomorrow, and we've already decided after we do all the fun stuff, we're gonna go get high and watch Madame Web because it's terrible. It, but it's here's the unfortunate thing: it's not one of those movies though that you're like it's so bad it's good. It's just it's just dull. It's a dull uh, movie. It's not it's not one of those movies you're like, wow, my God, I can't believe it's yeah, cats level bad people. I saw people saying like people are saying this cats of the superhero movies. That's what I heard. Not, it's it's not. It's just oh. really it, it's very poorly written. It's mm. very poorly written. So the question I asked myself and asked you guys in this thumbnail, and is it that bad? Yeah, it is that bad, but it's not like I didn't sit there going, Oh, when is this gonna end? Oh my god, it's just like when is something gonna happen? That's really <laughs> what it was. <laughs> And the, it's I, it's I one it. of the most I'd actually love to see the script because it's one of the most interesting uses of descriptive exposition from the character themselves I've ever seen. It's like the audience isn't trusted with normal day to day like knowledge like, hello, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. And it's like them actively blah, 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 whatever that is. And then dialogue of, of just like a conversation. And every time there's like an Easter egg, it's really interesting. There's there's a lot of like references to Uncle Ben's future, but it all is so tongue in cheek. It just makes all the characters sound like they're having like a mild stroke. It's really weird as a, as a movie, just as like a writing exercise. I, I'm I'm not sure how it exists, and I'm usually pretty generous with loving everything, and I I don't blame uh, any one person, especially not the actresses, because I feel like they did what they could. But it's just such a failure to movie even beyond the comic book genre it's not like a movie it's yeah. like someone wrote a first draft of a play wait wait did you just go full harry styles it's like a, a movie that you go to the cinema and you sit down and I you watch it, it like a movie yeah no it it's you know what it is <laughs> almost said it in the comments too it's like and we talked about this yesterday coy is that why in the world in and i think I, I answered my own question yesterday why you would hire the writers for morbius to do this when you're trying to show that you are really putting effort into this and they have shown that they don't know this genre very well and they're, it's it's lazy writing it's bad writing dialogue's really bad what it is to me and the reference that i used is like when you have when you're living in an apartment and your laundry machine breaks down and you're like okay look i gotta call the landlord here um this thing's not working so he sends the, the repair guy out and it's like well you could either keep fixing the same part over and over and over again and spending way more money than you would to just buy a new machine. And that's what these writers are. They're just a faulty part of a, of a washing machine. And it's like, get rid of the, that washing machine because it ain't working. Buy a brand new one. And then it'll be pretty good if you get the right washing machine. I, I just, I think the part that's like really sad is like, I'm never advocating for someone to like lose their job or anything like that. No, but, get another uh, job. But I, but I, I, based off of what you're talking about, I'm sure you also saw this online too, where somebody pulled their their credit history, and so you're talking about writers that wrote Dracula Untold, The <laughs> Last Witch Hunter, Gods of Egypt, The Power Rangers reboot, Morbius, and now this. So it's very clear you're not good at your job. Well, so I, like, I, I, what, I, the Power I, Rangers, the Power Rangers was their kid, Citizen Kane because that movie wasn't that bad. It um, wasn't that it wasn't that bad, but no. it just didn't it didn't slap at the box office. They no. clearly they clearly did not right. do what they needed to do, and that could have been any number of things that did that. But it clearly right. just didn't hit. And so when you throw it in with everything else, at what point does somebody need to go? 
that's the studio maybe, maybe. Fault, dude, because you know what it is i've been there before i've sat in the offices where they've done this before who do we hire well we hire the guys that can go really fast and that can turn around scripts like that that they're not that expensive and they can work and they have good relationships with the studio so like hey can you guys do this sure boom, boom, boom. here you go and it's like great let's shoot it and it's like because they, they don't cost a lot of money probably or you know enough reasonable enough they can turn things around quick and that's why they that's why writers get hired when they can move like that and they can toss things out but you're exactly right but look at the receipts they're not good receipts they're terrible yeah, and really what's interesting bad. is it it clearly didn't need to be set when it was so right. it also kind of feels like it was a first draft in the sense of we decided to make this the early 2000s like was it written then and they just sat on it for 20 right. years because there was no i mean there was a beyonce uh poster and the use of toxic otherwise and those things can be today. I, I just, it was a really odd choice to be, this is 2003. Super. It didn't tie into any, any Spider-Man. It didn't like, it wouldn't have worked for Tom because he'd have been 13 instead of 15. It didn't work for right. uh, Andrew because it doesn't time up with his chronology of the original amazing Spider-Man. So it's just a lot of odd choices like that, that felt mm -hmm. like someone wrote in ink that should have written in pencil. Like <laughs> some of the, some of the concepts are interesting like the idea of uh of a spider sense that goes so far that it can be kind of prophetic and that would yeah. lead to someone trying to prevent something and then you know like the 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 butterfly effect of things that could be an interesting way to do a final destination story with superheroes but they didn't do that no. it just kind of like things just kept happening on screen and yeah. none of the things happening on screen were either that interesting or that super heroic there's a lot more time of girls talking about not very interesting things even to the people on screen like there's a lot of scenes that feel like they're the scenes between scenes and i felt bad for the actresses because they were doing what they could with dialogue but what do you do with talking about nothing yeah i know it's true and look there's so many things that were wrong about this and the performance is like um we talked about this with the directing there's a lot of times where you can say okay look and i brought up yesterday gavin hood who Gavin Hood was a director. He, he back in like 2000, I think it was five, 2006. He worked on a film called Satsi, which if you haven't seen it, it is a brilliant little film. And because of that film, he was getting a lot of buzz around the studios. So Fox hired him to do X-Men Wolverine, X-Men origins. Right? So when you hear that, you go, Ooh, right. And from everything that I heard, he was bullied, uh, in a way that like make what I mean by that is, do your this is the movie that you're gonna do you got to make this movie you don't have a lot of experience you gotta listen to us boom 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 boom. and then a big that stinker came out um and i don't even know if what he's been doing lately i, I haven't heard a lot of it. He, he had a lot of promise right now the reverse of that sometimes i think we will just right away go oh well the studio must have have bullied them or the studio must have done this i don't know if that's the case with this movie because there's some things that happened in this movie that are just bad directing there's one there's one particular scene where uh quick spoilers guys for madame web you've been warned <laughs> um uh, i can't even do this right so they have they they're like one of the, <laughs> the the villain which is one of the worst villains ever uh he's chasing the girls and uh madame web in the in the subway and he start and then he's got them right there he's right they're right there his whole goal is to get these girls because they're going to get him in the future he, they're right there so what does he do he starts beating up the cops right they're right there and then he's so then when he does do that and he's beating up the cops one of the girls looks and goes it's so stupid and it's like why would you put that shot in there why is that in there this is this is and that's just one of many different and, instances and the whole movie's weirdly adr like i think that yeah. the i've never seen a villain have more adr in a movie i've literally like never seen it where there isn't a scene of him talking, I don't think. Like, I don't think there's a single scene where his lips line up with his speech. And then there's also added in ADR where they add in mustache twirling lines of like, I'm blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm paying you for. And then it's like they cut to away and they go, paying you a lot of money. And it's, and it's just really odd choices where I don't know if there's a tone to this film. And one of the things I was really excited about from the trailers, it felt like the tone of a movie that was like a late 90s, early 2000s blockbuster pick. Like, this went straight to DVD. It's going to be a fun, like, you know, bad time. And I really liked the tone of, of 2000s blockbuster movies. But this wasn't that. It just was a hodgepodge of tones that felt like it was put together in a blender. Yeah. And then at no point was there any closure or any validation or any... I don't I didn't feel and that's yeah. not acceptable. Well, you're not going to get a lot of validation in this movie at all because it's losing grip on the box office 
during its second day in the theaters. And it says, this is from comic book movie. It may struggle to even make $20 million this opening weekend. Madam Web is proving to be powerless at the box office during its six day opening. And if the latest figures are to be believed, it might not even make 20 million by the time the weekend's over. After an underwhelming 6.5 million on opening day, things went from bad to worse for Madam Web on Thursday. According to Deadline, Sony Pictures' latest Marvel movie webbed up a similarly disappointing 2.15 million during its second day in theaters. Wow, that's bad. 64% drop on day two, and that doesn't bode well for a six-day opening. In fact, the trade is even unsure if Madam Web will even make, make $20 million by the time the weekend's over. It's almost halfway there with 8.2, but word of mouth is dire, and it seems that most moviegoers are going to see Bob Marley one love instead. As they should. What's that? As they should. As they should, as compared to the, the two of them, for sure. Sony Pictures appears to have given up on promoting the movie as the official Madam Web account on X hasn't posted anything since February 13th. Wow. <laughs> from, that's crazy. Aside from a few reposts, the main account has stayed silent since February 6th, with the studio <laughs> saying, fuck it. <laughs> Still, the studio expects a $27 million holiday opening weekend, and we guess we'll ultimately end up on a good five seven million beneath that. Uh, even if Madam Web somehow exceeds expectations, though, it'll still be $12 million beneath Morbius three days after 2022. Um, and then Sony's going to keep a close eye on how Venom 3 and Craven the Hunter perform later this year. Should they also fail, then it'd be time for the studio to go back to the drawing board and start over with its Marvel offerings before the brand is damaged beyond repair, if it isn't already. While everyone seems to agree that Madden Web sucks, that's bad, it slipped to 14% now on Rotten Tomatoes, making it one of the worst-reviewed comic book movies ever. At least there are some fans out there asking the important questions. Um, I, I don't I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dude, it's brutal. I... It's brutal. <laughs> The worst, the worst part is, is that I was on, I was online yesterday and I was like, I don't open up Facebook very often. I go just to check to see if there's events and I see a homie of mine, a good homie of mine. He's like, y'all, you got to get out in the theaters. Your boy is officially the MCU. You got to go see my damn web. I said, bitch, what? <laughs> like, yeah. I, feel, I feel really bad because I want my homie to do well. But I was like, first of all, you're not the MCU. You are very yeah. far from the MCU and second of all just don't I know you're excited you're in a feature film in theaters don't don't talk about this I know it it's, yourself, it's bro. Bro. even the studio's like forget it forget it I can't uh, believe their own Twitter is like nah because they we don't have time to retweet <laughs> good for them at this point good for them if they know that it stinks move on moving on but I'll say it like the, and someone mentioned in the comments just, just now and I was going to bring up the same point how often are the critics and the audience on the same page like on Rotten Tomatoes, it's usually always the audience score is always, you know, 30, 40% higher. And I think, well, I actually do think it is that still because I think it's like 54% from the audience when it's normally like wow. 80. Right? It's, it's bad. It's bad. It's, like, it's really bad. So, and it's, it's terrible because, like you said, Winston, you never root for anybody to, to fail, but it's like it just shows and it goes back to the whole conversation I had with Roxy yesterday. Sony does not have a grip on how to do these movies, the executives no. just don't know how to do it. They, 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 in all honesty, and what that is, I, I understand why they haven't let go. When you, when you have all of these Spider-Man movies you did in collaboration with the MCU, pulling the money they did, and the last one pulling damn near two billion, like I get it. I understand why you're not trying to loosen the grip on that. But there is a point at which, why don't you do what you do best at this point and keep focusing on the animation side of this? Mm -hmm. Because what you've done there is incredible. And right. then you can continue to collab with Disney, but just leave this alone. Like at this point, because they now won't. they won't. No, they won't. They won't. And I, I, I Coy, I said this. Craven's not going to be good. No, like at this, I, I, with, I with this track Craven's record, hope, man. Well, <laughs> I like Venom. I think the Venom movies are an absolute blast. I give Spider Verse a lot of credit because it's a Lord Miller joint that's a separate entity altogether. But excluding Spider Verse, because I think those are two of the best comic movies of all time. Absolutely. I like Venom one and two. I definitely think this was worse than Morbius, but I do think Craven's trailer gave me hope, and it's an R-rated movie from a director that's got a lot of credit. I, I, I think Aaron Taylor Johnson's Craven is not Madam Web. Like I think they're <laughs> that might not be Spider Verse, but it's not Madam Web. Yeah. So mm. there's I have hope. I have hope. Yes. Yeah, so someone asked, wasn't the li last live Spider-Man movie a box office hit? Yeah, but that wasn't Sony. That was that was Marvel. It was Marvel? I I know Sony gets 
a lot of this stuff, but it's it's an MCU movie. That's why mm -hmm. it, 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 the, the last Spider Man No Way Home. Sure, Sony got money for it, but it wasn't it wasn't their their executives weren't running the charge because clearly yeah. when they are running the charge, you get Michael Keaton in a post credit scene that makes no sense at all. And you get these things, and this is the conversation that Koi and I, I had briefly yesterday, was that when it comes to what Koi <laughs> likes about Venom and Venom 2, what a lot of people liked about those movies, is that it almost felt like a late 90s superhero movie. And that is what they, they did well box office-wise, so they, they're going to do that. But the problem is the magic wasn't, oh, we're going to make like a, a kind of cool late, late 90s movie type thing. It was that the studio executives are making decisions like late 90s studio executives before the comic book movie genre changed and, and only tom hardy knows how to act in that environment that's right i think that's the difference like you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. there is a fun there because that once he got in that lobster tank i was like oh hardy gets it and michelle williams gets it and that's why those are unique movies right. too i think the space but i think aaron taylor johnson might get it i'm i'm, I'm still i'm hopeful I mean, he's he's been in it already in, 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 in a number of comic book films, so he's at least familiar with the space. Like, I mean, this is Dakota's first outing here. And good for her for being in interviews recently, being like, I would totally do a sequel. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> like, I I mean, that's a choice. <laughs> what does she care yeah. for the pair? I mean, she doesn't care. She didn't even, they asked her, Josh Horowitz asked her about, like, the, the, the Spider-Man movies, and he's going... He's like, can you name the three Tom Holland? <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider here, here he comes. It was hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> Spider-Man, he's <laughs> back again. You shouldn't give two shits about this, the, about this genre. <laughs> didn't care. And clearly. Um, and the Goblet of Spider. No, and they didn't care, but they didn't ask her to care. That's the problem also. They didn't ask her to care. They didn't, hey, listen, we're going to make a movie, and we're going to put, a, it's going to be Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, so we're going to start doing the math. Oh, no, you know what? Now we're going to make a Tom Holland. He's more popular. Okay, let's do it. Oh, wait a minute. The math doesn't add up. We got to change everything else. So I also don't know where they would have gone in the movie. No. Like it, watching the movie, I don't no. know where that would have occurred. No one knows. Why did it have to be from 73 to 2003? It made no sense. Ben Parker, why is he even in this movie? Makes no sense. Oh, it's not related. Then why is Ben Parker in it? Why and they never, it? they never, yeah. I mean, Winston it's, will see, but it doesn't, it doesn't pay off it, in a way that felt pay. good. Anyway. So, yeah. So the question, uh, Koi, I ask you, by definition, is the movie that bad? By definition, yes. I'd say worse than Morbius. Agreed. Um, moving on. So I will. I mean, there's there's so many other stories that are just you could you that are covered all over the place with this thing, but I just don't know if it's really worth it to to talk about because not the week of Deadpool X no, and Fantastic let's, Four. Let's now let's we got that. Fox in here. Let's do that. And just a reminder to everybody that we are what we're going to do is we're going to cover all these stories, and then I see that you guys have put your questions in there. Any questions you want to ask, you can throw the super chats in there too. We don't do stream labs, we just do the super chats. So throw the super chats in there. Um, and then we'll get to them by once we finish all the stories, then we will. But before I do that, I want to tell you guys real quick about our wonderful friends over at both Rocket Money and Z Biotics, which are great. Here you go. So let me also tell you this and tell you about Rocket Money before we move on. I want to tell you about Rocket Money, guys. Rocket Money to me is is just I've told you so many times, and you guys have heard me talk about Rocket Money. Rocket Money, I've been using now, I think, oh man, it's got to be at least almost two years now, a year and a half, two years. And so what Rocket Money does is, you know, you have those subscriptions that you that you have and you you, not, you haven't been paying attention to them. And you're like, oh, that app looks amazing. I'm going to do that app. Oh, it's a free trial period? Great. 30 days? I got it. I'll, I'll remember. You don't remember. And then they start charging you 7 17 27 37 dollars a month and you're like whoa when did that happen well rocket money rocket money does is they tell you about all the subscriptions that you have and everything that you have and they go no you want that you need that don't do that they tell you how much money you spent the week before they tell you how much money you're spending in general they tell you when you have things coming up when you got bills coming up you can link everything to it it is a lifesaver i love rocket money i checked it this morning so okay remember you have this this and this hey an unauthorized thing did you do that so yep i did do that okay great here you go they can check your credit everything rocketmoney.com slash big thing it is so good i put the link in the description by the way rocketmoney.com slash big thing and you will thank me for that i love rocket money Ew. um zeobiotics by the way if you guys don't know oh it's the it's it's great because I, I mean, what you can relate to, John, is we we can't we can't do it the way we used to. No, we were those young. Days are done. no, those days are done. But they are fan 
fantastic because it's really a game changing product. Um, for me, I, I always use it a night out when I'm drinking, mm. and because it's it's Zbiotics, and so I, I just can't bounce back the way that I used to. Right. I got to make a choice. I can either have a great night or a great next day, and that is until I found Zbiotics. And I'll tell you, there's a, a, a surefire way to wake up and feel fresh after a night of drinking. And it is with Zbiotics. So what is it? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Now I'm going to tell you. Zbiotics is a pre-alcohol probiotic drink. It is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. Mm. Steph Sabral loves these, by the way. Loves them. Nice. It was invented by a PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. And here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. Yeah. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that is to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break down this byproduct down. Just remember to make Zbiotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly, and you'll feel your best tomorrow. And I'll tell you, right before I knew I was going to drink a couple of glasses of wine last night, John, so I had some Zbiotics tomorrow. Ooh, every time I have it, right before I, I do notice a difference the next day. I'm just, I'm able to go. Even after a night out or a night of uh, having having some fun, I can confidently plan on doing all these shows and being able to work. I didn't have anything like I said, no, no, not foggy, nothing, because I was on the fence about it at first too. Because then I was hanging out with um, Steph and she was telling me about it, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'll do it, I'll give it a shot. And believe me, guys, it's the real deal. So I gave it a try especially yesterday. It's amazing. And go and do it. You go to zbiotics.com slash big thing. You'll get 15% off your first order when you use big thing at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you are unsatisfied for any reason, they're going to refund your money with no questions asked. So remember to head to zbiotics.com slash big thing. Use that code big thing at checkout for 15% off. Thank you to Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode and for the good times. Happy to have Zbiotics and Rocket Money on the show. I'm loving those guys, man. I'm loving and and I'm getting messages, guys. I'm it's it's working. People are like, hey, been trying out Rocket Money. I love it. It really helped me out. And Zbiotics, especially after the Bass Super Bowl, people are going to be uh, excited for that. I hope some people used it for for um, Valentine's Day, and I hope people use Blue Chew, which we'll talk about later. It's a month um, till uh, St. Patty's Day. It's oh, you better Zbiotics season. When you come, when you when you're here next week, I'll make sure that I'll give you uh, some of you oh, if you're ready to get them. Hell I need yeah. to prep. Yeah. yeah. Um. All I'm right. Saying. Let's get, let's talk about this, guys, because this is this is we've been talking about it forever, and now it's time. Fantastic Four. The cast has been revealed. Um. We've got Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards. Vanessa Kirby is playing um Sue Storm. Um. Uh, Evan Evan. I was was this second Bacharach? Is that how you say it? Evan Moss Bacharach, Evan Moss Bacharach, and then uh, Joseph Quinn for Johnny. So this these rumors we, we've been talking about Fantastic Four forever. You know, Jeff Snyder announced uh, Joseph Quinn and Vanessa Kirby like back in July or August or something of of last year. Corey, you said something about the uh, Joseph Quinn was supposed to be on a Comic Con and then he canceled. He was supposed to be a MegaCon with me yeah. this last. I did the Stranger Things panel and uh, he he canceled about a month out and that was to me confirmation. I mean, I, it was definitely me taking a leap. But as soon as he canceled, I was like, oh, he's either filming or can't talk about things he's currently doing. I wouldn't be doing cons if I was Human Torch. That kind of validated the the rumor a little bit for me because MegaCon's the biggest East Coast cons. When he dropped out, I was like, ah, bigger work. It makes sense. This, I mean, it's it's one of these things where, Wincy, you know, we're talking about like, well, what do you think of the cast? I've already asked you this question because it's like one of the worst kept secrets like ever. Everybody knew that this was the cast. I mean, it was it wasn't only just that Jeff Snyder. Then like the, you know, all the major trades were also saying it. So it, but, but it's a good cast. It is, and that's actually why I really loved how they decided to announce it. Um, I thought you took an, a more artistic approach to it instead of doing a big con release and all that, which is going to cost you a lot of money to get the stars down there to pay them to do that, to make sure you get the stage time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I thought that this was a clever and fun way to essentially just confirm the worst kept secret in Hollywood for the last like yeah. half a year. Yeah. So. And they no. did it on Valentine's Day. And I think that Koi made a good point also is that they also want to make sure because they had Deadpool, they had this, they had all these things kind of come out for them to go, hey, that Man and Web thing, that's not us. This is what we do. 
I think the optics on Marvel right now are are so sullied to a point that isn't fair to the actual brand. If you look at the top 10 global releases of last year, three of them are comic book films. But because it isn't all gold, everyone is looking at the negative because that's that's conversation. Human the human brain patterning is like fight or flight. Like, oh, something went wrong. I have to attach to that to solve the problem. Like, oh, I burnt my hand. Don't touch that. So we remember the bad things more than the positive things. So even though there have been positive things, Guardians 3, Spider-Verse, there are a lot of negativity, uh, you know, plus the Twitter of it all hanging around the MCU. So I think it was really smart while there's so much negativity and yeah. while we're so pattern based to be negative to go like, hey, that thing that came out this weekend, like, look over here. Like, this is us yeah. doing like some good stuff. It is. Yeah, it's it's man. It's kind of a uh, you know help you in one way, like you said, Koi. Screw you in another, because like you said, what do you do? Do you do do you fully go? We have nothing to do with this. But then, like the goodwill you get from seeing beyond the Spider Verse or across the Spider Verse, uh, you know, you gotta have to throw that out. Then, then technically, even though it is MCU, then it is Tom Holland. You kind of have to throw that out. Like, what what do you what do you do in the sense that you kind of want Sony to keep Marvel's name out its effing mouth, but at the same time, there have been some good stuff to come from them. So you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a weird yeah. thing where you don't want to fully dis. Yeah, but I mean, you do need to do it somewhat. Like, I mean, I'll 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 push back a little bit on that. I think that I I don't disagree that the social media aspect of it all is people are gonna want to scream and yell no matter no matter what, whether you're in a positive vibe or a negative vibe but i i do think that there's merit to say that even though you had a few of those movies in the top 10 as you mentioned koi it doesn't take away the fact that there's just been a lot of subpar material right there's just been oh especially comparably I, i'm not i'm not denying the i'm just saying that people aren't talking about the positive I, i'm just by nature yeah right you're, you're going to focus on the stuff that's not working but i do also think that there's merit to the fact that more stuff is not working the more stuff is um but there is but you're right that we're you look at some of the stuff you're like no guardians almost made a billion dollars you know these movies they did very well but the other thing with guardians is that guardians as much as it's connected to the mcu this one really wasn't this one really wasn't connected to their plan of what they were doing. it was connected to the previous two films but it wasn't connected to their overall plan moving forward like the the new structure of where they're going mm. working that good so fantastic four is one of those movies that i think is um is very important as is Which dead. also probably won't be connected that directly, at least for the first two thirds of it, when they're in the sixties. That's that's right, and I I like and I really like that they're doing that. By the way, I really it worked like, for Loki, man. I love that Loki felt like it was tied, but not beholden to the MCU. I like that it was like Phase One referential yes, without yes, being like burdened yes. by glorious continuity. That, mm-hmm. And look, and you got you've got to put them in that time period because also the other reason for that. Is because where were they? Where were they during the original phases? And and so Koi mentioned yesterday that they were caught in the quantum realm, um, and that would make more sense to me. Where it's like, okay, let's have this adventure of them in the 1960s. Let's set them up in the 1960s, uh, and then we can. Well, where were they during the Thanos stuff? Where oh, that's where they were. Okay, that makes sense. And then they come back, and now they're you know the focus of both X Men, focus on Fantastic Four. And then you get Winston, we, as we've said many times over. See you later, Coy. Uh, many times <laughs> over. That we uh, uh, that we were looking for all stars. I got you. Yeah, and we and the all stars are being. I mean, the farm system. The farm system has been. Uh, <laughs> like you last week. Like you last week. See, ain't nobody come for me no more, man. It's not. It's not just me. All right, Mason hey, Cass. <laughs> at, at the ver- at the very least, I was trying to prevent your studio from burning down. What the, what the hell are he doing? He's he sounds like he getting a bowl of cereal. No, he's chasing cats. <laughs> he's cats. Cats probably <laughs> shitting on the floor. Or something. Um, so, oh my god! Well, but yeah. no, I I hear you. The only my only beef with the idea of they've been trapped in the quantum realm. I feel like you got to find a different. You got to find a different um, excuse here because I understand the quantum realm is like its own universe, but you're, you're honestly going to tell me that if Reed Richards was down in the damn quantum realm, that Kang and or whoever down there would not have noticed that the Fantastic Four are there. I think that that isn't necessarily, unless yeah. you're saying a situation where Reed is running an experiment and they just pass through it really quickly, like, uh oh, we ended up in the future. I don't think them being in the trapped in the quantum realm works at all because so then, you're implying Kang was uh, in any way good at his job. 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm implying that, yeah, because he was able to find Ant-Man running around with his little drones in there. You mm. genuinely think that if Reed Richards, Mr. I be doing all sorts of science shit and has all sorts of energy that's going off and is probably trying to figure out his own way to get the fuck out, that Kang wouldn't have found him? Nah, bro, that don't work. That, that, that if, doesn't if we, work. If we presented Kang in a way that he felt adequate i would i would be on your side but like the quantum realm is huge it's and huge. kang got, kang got I, trapped I, in there I doing nothing i get it it is huge but again kang was there and was able to scan to find scott and cassie and lock yeah, them up like, are there yeah, levels but, he, but, but it was also like seven blocks away he scanned and yeah. he found him in like you know next door okay right. he was in west hollywood he was popping mm-hmm. by i i Look, look, either way, either way, this thing negative zone makes more sense. But fine. I think the negative zone is going to be the quantum realm. I I think they're gonna have those are such similar concepts. Let's 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 all agree. Who cares? Because (laughs) because because they're gonna figure out a way to say, oh yeah, that's why they weren't around. So at least they're gonna do something. You know, they've been in the grocery store for for 50 years. Great. (laughs) So but the other side of it is now it also looks like Galactus is gonna be the one, is gonna be the main villain, and then Doctor Doom. They're saying it's going to be in a post credit scene. I think that you should at least set them up in the beginning. Um, and we had this whole conversation yesterday, again, Koi, where it, like I, I saw this comment that came in, and it was like, I, I what I want to tell people here on the show is when it comes to my channel, and I think people realize this now over the last two years that this channel's really been active, is that we are always open for a conversation we're always open we don't ever we, i don't want people to agree with us all the time that's boring i want cat i want real conversation and i also want people to be able to have intelligent conversation and so if you like so if, if winston cat says oh all giamatti is going to be dr doom right and you go go winston you're busting winston's balls like we do and saying oh really but to call him you're terrible you don't know what you're doing you suck you you, you you're casting choices of the worst you're gone and that was one of the things that happened to me the other day. I was like talking about, I still, Henry Cavill, I think would be the perfect Dr. Doom because oh. I think that we'd go against typecasting, all these different things, and he's sh- starting to show an edge. And I was getting ready to have a conversation with this guy because because I would have liked to seen the guy go, hey, I don't really agree with that choice. I like the Killian Murphy choice better, and I'll tell you why, because this, this, and this, and I don't see Henry Cavill that way. Christian, once again, shows that his casting is terrible, but you're gone. I'm not even going to engage in the conversation anymore because it's not an intelligent conversation. It's just insulting to insult. And I think, yeah, and I, like I said, I don't need you to agree with me. And I, and I, and if you think Henry's not a great choice, I'd love to hear your smart opinion on why that is. And I think that that's the conversation that we need to have. And also, Henry Cavill will be a great Dr. Doom. Yeah. I mean, look, man, people forget that that the way that all of this works on top of that. We don't need to get on a soapbox or anything. But this is like being at the club. And yeah. if you're going to stand on the tables and break bottles and shove patrons, then the bouncer's going to throw your ass out. So, like, it's, I always say it. it's my it's my store. If you walk into my store with your pants down, I'm going to throw you out. I'm going to throw you out. And it's like and free speech. You can. Go free speech on your Twitter, which is totally fine. Free speech, and I have the the free will to throw you the fuck out of my business. Yeah, free speech <laughs> isn't freedom from consequence. That's what I'm saying. So anyway, so speaking of Doctor Doom, we all have our choices, right? Um, the question would be now: When in do we think that post credit scene for sure, or do we think that they should at least show the relationship between Reed and Doom in the beginning before it all goes south? I think we might get Doom as early as post credit scene Deadpool. Um, okay. I, I think that the shot of Annihilus in the trailer leads, I personally think, to the end of time in a new way. I think we might head to Battle World. And I think that the Secret Wars frame in that Deadpool trailer was a very iconic Deadpool, I mean, uh, Doctor Doom moment. Like one of the most iconic Doctor Doom moments the last 20 years is God Emperor Doom. And it's in that issue. So I'm wondering if that's alluding to Battle World, and then Battle World ties directly into Secret Wars. But sure. in between Battle World, we'd have the Doom arc where we'd have him maybe yeah. trapped in the 60s. Maybe he gets trapped in Battle World when the uh, Fantastic Four gets trapped in the 60s. Maybe there's a time disparity where they're competing to get you know the cosmic radiation solved, and one gets trapped in Battle World, one gets trapped in the 60s. And I think there could be as early as Deadpool a reveal of who he is because. I think Doctor Doom at this point is as big or bigger than the Fantastic Four, especially since we've known about them being cast so long. So it'd be a bigger moment if it happened in Deadpool. Winston? Yeah, and you know, I'm thinking, man, that like, I could see, since we obviously know this is Deadpool kills the Fox universe, essentially, is what we're going at. I could totally see a situation where in that process with him working with the TVA, he goes to... 
he goes to prune uh you know doom and it ends up being a doom bot and that's kind of how we then get our introduction and we maybe don't even necessarily get the face of who it is but maybe we figure it out via voice or something like that and that mm -hmm. that might be your introduction i could see something like that yeah um all right let's say you guys whether you are in the live chat right now whether you're watching on the replay what do you think about the fantastic forecast in general what do you think about where the setting doom everybody what do you think and do you think the fantastic four is going to be the uh one of the saving graces but not the beginning of the saving graces as we saw yes yeah, right, i want to before we leave fantastic four i do want to say that i think eben moss bakrock is maybe the best casting we've had since kamala khan uh, like what an immaculate choice to go with like those baby blues. I can hear him say it's clobber in time or it's cousin in time, which is canon now up here. But like, I, I love him in the bear because he's so unlikably charming. Like there's a, there's a balance of charm and unlikability and the gruffness of Ben Grimm is such an important part of him at points. He's just so upset at Reed for cursing him. He's ruined his life. And I think there's something perfect about what we've seen from this actor as micro or as cousin or as these things. And I really love that everything about Ben Grimm, I immediately go, oh, that totally works for right. this casting without it being typecasting. I, I wouldn't have thought of this separately. I, I was thinking like Holt McCallan Lee from Iron Claw. Mm. I was thinking, you know, a different build. But as soon as they said it, I went, oh, that's genius. So I just it's wanted to perfect. give some love for that casting. Yeah, it's perfect. And we, yeah, I'm glad that you brought that back up. Um, and as I said that someone playing drums, who's playing drums back there? What is that? I, that's that's what i was trying to tell you so here yeah so while it's happening while it's happening i'll just be myself it's, it's amazing um okay so then the other thing is we mentioned fantastic four being the one to help the mcu this is the one literally calls himself marvel jesus in the trailer and in its first 24 hours after airing during the super bowl the Wolverine Deadpool trailer was seen by 365 million people online, and it makes it the most viewed trailer of all time. It beat the 355 million who turned in for the first trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, this is a, another conversation that I had with Roka, I think, on either this Monday or last Monday. I am pretty confident that this movie is going to get, if not a billion dollars, close to a billion dollars. And these types of trailer reactions end because the trailer was not... It was good. It was a good trailer. So people were pretty excited about it overall. I think this movie is going to be one of their massive hits. They need it right now. And they also need it to capitalize on, okay, what is the shape of this whole multiverse thing? And it clearly is that. Coy, what do you think? I think the marketing of Ryan Reynolds is also a huge factor in that billion dollars. I think Maximum Effort is the best marketing firm on the planet right now. They've made me curious about Mint Mobile. They've made me, like, I love the gin he made. And, like, he's very good at marketing to get me to try things. I'm not much of a gin guy. I'm a tequila whiskey guy, but I tried his gin. I think that, like, people that might not have been on board for another Deadpool or people that might not have exposure to Deadpool are going to be in love with the unique marketing leading up to it. I mean, D23 was the week before they announced Wolverine and Deadpool. Clearly, Disney had wanted them to announce it at D23, and then Ryan went, no, 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 we're going to do it my way. And that made that incredibly memorable them two on the couch conversation that wouldn't have necessarily happened at D23. I also think him getting it on his YouTube page first is a huge sign of who's wearing the pants. Ryan Reynolds' YouTube is who debuted that trailer, not Amazing. Disney, not Fox, not... Like, it's literally Ryan going, no, 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 we're doing this my way because I'm the mm. best at this. So... This feels like where Downey Jr. had more power yeah. with Iron Man. This feels you're not, like you're not wrong because also remember D23. I'm sure he had a big hand in saying we don't want to put our trailer at D23. That's we what I'm saying. Want, it was the yeah, week we, later. We, we don't want to announce the anything. We don't want to announce anything. It's gonna happen our way. And that's why I think him and marketing day. is gonna be huge on top of it. Because yeah, this trailer was very right. Like there's moments in this trailer that I don't even know if they're as conscious as i'm reading into them and that's the genius of deadpool is like there's a white gloved hand shaping deadpool and spanking right. him like mickey mouse there's a scene where you literally have him call himself marvel jesus but he's also playing around with the continuity of the tva and there's an image of ryan reynolds accepting his own emmy as deadpool in the frame there's a secret wars cover shot that has a a, a bottle of Mountain Dew that's tying into stan lee so we get our own little stan lee cameo like there's so many details that feel very ryan reynolds that i don't know that we'd get otherwise so i i feel like the marketing is also going to be a huge i think this clears a billion but i also think it's in part because the marketing has started five months early yeah winston what do you think of the trailer i didn't really talk to you about it yet you're on mute buddy yeah 
See, oh, that's, that's that's why. I, like I said, oh, this construction. Go ahead, wow, stream, bro. Go ahead, I totally get it. Yeah. Um, no, I I thought that it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I I genuinely can't wait for it. I'm trying to already look around and fi figure out what's going on. Uh, as as far as his introduction to the TVA, certain elements that like do and don't make sense. But I remember he also got his quote unquote time turner. Uh, they would snatch that at the end of the movie and started making changes and stuff like that, which is probably what has got the TVA in, uh, looking for him in the first place, uh, since he decided to just do whatever the hell he wanted for a little bit. Um, but I just, I have so much faith in Ryan Reynolds um, that I have no doubt in my mind that this not only will clear a billion, like I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking like a billion five. Like, I think, I think, I don't know if it'll hit two, but I would not be surprised if it hits a billion five. It'd be hard with rated R. It'd be hard with rated R. I, I know it will be, yeah. but I think when you're talking about potentially saving the MCU, yeah. which is not only the plot of the movie itself, yeah. but it, it, which is ironic, it almost makes you feel like they've been doing this all along just to give Deadpool even more credence to just tear it down as much as possible. Like, you have to save the sacred timeline. Um, I, I think when you put that, Ryan Reynolds' marketing and star power um, and, and all that, I think once the word is out that that Marvel's back, if this movie really does hit the way that it looks like it will, and this is really Hugh Jackman's last ride type situation, I genuinely think it'll it'll be able to do something like that, to be honest with you, and, and do something unprecedented with a billion five on an R-rated movie. Yeah. Like, I think uh, that would be crazy. Well, speaking of Deadpool, though, did you guys see that this report, like people are thinking that, that uh, Daniel Radcliffe was actually in the trailer? Did you see this? You're now you're muted. I, I'm I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened with your sound? Yeah, exactly. All right, come back. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Can you? No, you're great. Nope. This is the sound issues. Are <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't turn the voodoo curse on. I well, off. I, I can just I'll turn it on. I'll tell you about this. So this is this is the report that happened. Um, that Daniel Radcliffe. People are wondering if that was actually him in the scene so late mm. last year it was rumored that harry potter star daniel radcliffe had been cast in marvel studios deadpool 3 which we now is deadpool and wolverine at the time it was only reported that he'd been in a secret role though there were rumors that he'd be playing a variant of wolverine these rumors were also um due to the fact that the 34 year old was getting unusually buff radcliffe repeatedly denied these reports claiming that he only got buffed because he's obsessed but the rumors persisted and now that we have a trailer for deadpool and wolverine the internet is certain that radcliffe was shown at least once so it, it i'm gonna pull a screenshot and it's like from 120 and i'll show everybody kind of where everybody thinks that it is um and i i, I ask you guys if you think a it, it does look like wolverine for sure is but the question is is it it, and it does look like a variant of Wolverine, yeah. but the question is: Is it actually Daniel Radcliffe? Is the is the other question there? So let's um let's put this here's here's the picture, and you guys tell me tell, tell me what you think. Here is the picture of where they're who they're saying. You can see it. It's like far in the back there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. I I I mean, it, it looks enough like the back of his head. I know that sounds weird to say. It looks like the back of his head, but I could I could I that's, could. That's a Wolverine that. variant, but it's just the question: yeah. of, Is it Radcliffe? Coy, you have sound? I do. Maybe do right. I? You okay, do. so I, I think it's either Taron Edgerton or Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. Um, he's a slighter build, and but still a broad back, but a smaller build than Hugh Jackman, and. Yeah. I think that reveal of Patch is so much funnier if it's not Hugh. And they're clearly mm -hmm. in Madripoor where Patch lives. Patch is uh, an alias of Wolverine that would be more fun to do than necessarily just looking the same. So I personally think it's uh, Radcliffe. But I think it could also be Taron because they've joked about that before. Okay. Uh, sticking with the X-Men, and then we're going to get to your questions. Like I said, I saw there's a bunch of questions coming in here. And I see them all. Don't worry. We're going to get to every single one of them. So, and you can still throw the questions in. This is, we rarely go live with capes and cows. There's over a thousand you guys watching right now. So, if you have questions, if you ever wanted to ask us any questions, now is the time to do it. We'll be here until the very last one. Um, so, let's get to this X Men trailer, guys. This was X Men 97 came out yesterday, or yeah, came out yesterday, right? And it dropped. And I'm, I gave my thoughts on it. As someone who didn't watch the the series kind of growing up, I was very aware of it. 
and i thought it was a great trailer and i thought i loved what they did with it that they stuck with the this is kind of the stuff that i wish they would do with just films in general when you go and you make a movie like like indiana jones when you're doing an indiana jones movie and instead of putting 300 million dollars in into indiana jones make it look like the same movie that came out in 1981 was raiders of the lost ark and make it look like that kind of film and this is what this trailer did it looks like it was made in 97. yeah no i mean it looks it looks absolutely incredible. I immediately got transported back to, um, uh, you know, my childhood. I think the one thing that's actually interesting is the 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 animation at the end of X Men, uh, the animated series, the OG, got really bad. It got like overly gloss, and it's very ironic that they were obviously using that for like the series finale and all that. And they've actually then leaned back into it now. However. They have taken away, they have, they have done it in a way that you could take what looked like bad animation and actually improve the hell out of it and make it like really crisp and whatnot. So there's there's little things all over this that I absolutely fell in love with. I think the thing that blew up on my side of the internet was the Gambit Wolverine combo. Oh, cool. like, that new Cannonball and, special remix? Yeah. And, exactly. And I was laughing because someone was like, why are you riding him like that? I'm like, first of all, sir, welcome to my TED Talk. Uh, you just watch him charge up his claw so you can do infinitely more damage. But remember, Gambit specifically controls kinetic energy. So you notice how Wolverine got significantly faster after that because he very easily could have been giving him a speed boost as well. So I'm not here for your nonsense. I'm here for the shenanigans that will be all sorts of like incredible combo moves, let alone we've known that magneto was going to take uh take over the x-men that was something his that hair happened. is fantastic fantastic it looks majestic it looks incredible fantastic hair uh Koi, you love this trailer also yeah i did I, and i'm sorry i'm gonna say fastball special cannibal is another x-men but uh the moment where cyclops says the iconic to me my x-men was just so much comic love and lore mm -hmm. to me uh not only did it feel like the comic come to life but it's a moment we haven't really had from cyclops in so long it's finally time to let cyclops be a leader it's good to see some respect on his name i also think that of the adaptations of x-men this is the best storm so i'm really excited to see this newly re-mohawked storm get to see her in more of that other leadership role there's the blue and gold teams i think they'll lean into so to me this is one of the definitive takes on the x-men i'm curious how it ties into where they go as we get to live action what storylines they start setting up here paying off but i'm just glad to see this team back because i've missed the x-men so much yeah, uh, and people are pretty excited about it. So I'm going to ask you guys now, for those people who are familiar with the show or from the animated show, uh, what do you think? Did you like it? If you weren't familiar with it, what do you think? Also, do you think that this is great for the X-Men in general? Because what I think that even though it's not the MCU canon, what it does is it starts to get the X-Men fresh back in everybody's mind. So make sure you comment, whether it's live or on the replay, for sure. All right, we're going to get to your questions now. I see a ton of them coming in there. And before I do, I saw a comment coming in, actually, from uh, one of you guys, which is amazing. And you're talking about Blue Chew. And yes, you're right. It is perfect that a show called The Big Thing has the sponsor from Blue Chew. You're absolutely right. Uh, and we're excited to talk about both Blue Chew and Fume. And I'll tell you about both of those right now. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Come on, let's do it. Let's talk about sex. Hey, guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Everybody, you're like, yeah, back in the day, go whenever I wanted to. Well, now you can increase your performance. You can get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. Blue Chew's no joke. It's pretty great. It's a unique online service, and it delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. You can take them whenever, daytime, night. You can plan ahead. Be ready whenever that opportunity arises. And the process is super simple. You sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you are approved, then you receive your prescription within days. And the best part? All online. No visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So, for me, yes, it works. And the thing is, you know, I didn't think I needed it, but hey, you try it for a month and you see, you love it. You can be missing out on the best sex of your life. I'm telling you, they always say first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions? Do it. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. They do. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. Love that. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. You got to try Blue Chew free, but you got to use that promo code Big Thing at checkout. Just pay five dollars shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code Big Thing to receive your first month free. Yeah, do you hear that? Free. 
Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we got to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Let's talk about some habits because you guys know you got some habits and there's nothing better than beating a bad habit with a good habit. And we've talked about fume before. You guys, you guys know we've talked about fume. Uh, we've we've had fume on, and we're glad that they are back. It's great. And Mark Riley is the one who's really been talking this thing up. And I can't wait for him to to talk about it even more so on the show um, when he's on for UAP. And he just talked about how flavorful it was, better than he thought. It feels very fresh, and it's like a refreshing herbal tea, but if it was vapor. Uh, it, it, it was, com- it, you can look at it like sticky soda. It's got non, it's, it's, it's really good. It's, it's well-weighted. It's perfectly balanced. It's extremely fun to fidget with. And it really, look at the, the, the wood itself. It's, it's great. You can start the year off right with the good habit by going to try fume.com slash big thing, getting the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners to the show 10% off when they use that code big thing to help make starting the good habit much easier because it's. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit that you're free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habit easy. It comes with adjustable airflow dial and it's designed with movable parts. It's great. They use flavored air instead of vapor. The fume is completely, completely natural, by the way, instead of electronics. And there's no, this is the reason why I decided people are like, well, why, why would you, why would you get involved with something like this? Why? Because they don't use harmful chemicals. They use delicious flavors. And that's why I got involved. Fume works. They're great. So thank you again to Fume for sponsoring the show. All right. Thank you again to our friends over at both Fume and Blue Chew. So we're excited to have both of them on board. All right, guys, we've got a lot of great questions here today. And this is the the, the fun about being part of, um, you know, the live thing is that we get a chance to talk to everybody. And it's like you see people, <laughs> let's hold one guy in the comments, like, I'm not paying to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't answer everybody's questions. A thousand people in here. So that we said, if you have a super chat and you want to be part of the conversation, you can. Then that's what we do. It's a way to support the show. It's a way for you to do it. So, but again, we also we see everybody kind of being part of it, and we read all the comments afterwards, and I respond to as many afterwards. No one said you have to, but it's a, take a stance, buddy. You'll be all right. Take a stance. <laughs> um, it's all right. He can talk to himself. That's fine. I just don't get it. It's like what? Are, what are you doing? Just, just don't. Just don't say that in your head. Say it in your head. Oh, no, 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 but that's that's the whole yeah. point. Everybody wants to talk. Renetta W. What's up, fellas? Love you guys. What is going on with Sony? What the hell? Why can't they put as much effort in their live action like they do animated Spider-Verse? Corey, can you explain this? We actually <laughs> oh, we talked about this yesterday, remember? Yeah, but, um, we did specifically. Yeah, go I, go I think so. There's an oversight situation where I think Phil and Chris, uh, Lord and Miller, are such formative producers writers and creators that they've got a lot more control over their corner of the universe and i think in large part because it's animated it didn't start in a way that a lot of people um were counting on it as much i think so it gave them more power more control more ability to leverage their own thing and then it did gangbusters got an oscar got a lot of love and now they have control over that corner of the universe but i don't know that they would have if it was live action and i don't know that the live action teams are ever going to have as much power as Lord and Miller do with their stuff. So they'd already proven themselves at Sony Animation with Cloudy the Chance of Meatballs. Yep. They obviously did great with uh, the 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 machines, uh, Miller's and the versus the machines. They've proven themselves time and time again, and they were already Sony folk at twenty one and twenty two Jump love Street. Spider Man, and they and they they are so passionate beyond the business that they're invested at all times. I I just did the Oscar uh, nomination panel with them. Yeah. Um, I sat down with the three directors and then the two of them. And we talked about the state of the industry like we do, like on Capes and Cowls, mm-hmm. for 20 minutes before we ever went on stage. And they wanted to know what I thought of how things were with Joker and Batman 2 and the things coming out this year. And then we did another 20 on just Spider-Man because they're so invested. And I don't know that anyone else is that passionate when they're not working yeah. as those two guys. They're, they breathe this stuff and it shows. All right. Uh, thank you for that one. Just following up here, uh, Spannery. Coy, I'm a huge fan, man. I love your love for comics because you always started to dive into comics, and I love it. So that just go. makes me happy, man. I appreciate that. And all the comic wrecks on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, I'm trying to keep doing comic wrecks between battling bigots. <laughs> There's the next one. Uh, Joey Pedras says, loving the casting for Legacy. Oh, we didn't talk about that. We should. Be, that's, I'm glad that Joey brought this up. Loving the, the casting for Legacy so far. Who would you guys cast as Ma and Pa Kent? 
don't think those have been cast yet. No, I haven't seen that yet. But what Rachel Brosnahan also, thank you for bringing this up. Rachel Brosnahan brought up that she um, she wants to really put the work in, obviously, and honor the Loises that came before. There's very classic. I think she's going to be. I think she's got an uh, opportunity to be. She if she if she does what I think she's going to do, she got a chance to be the goat. I really think she's got that in her, man. I think she's um she's fantastic and she's got that kind of sass that Lois needs and she's got the humor that Lois needs in a, in a in a certain, you know, not like telling yuck yucks, but uh but but the fact that Lois is witty and Lois she's, Yeah, she's got which she's a Pulitzer Prize winning writer. She speaks yes. thusly. I, I think she's gonna be great. But uh Ma and Pa Kent, Winston, got any ideas for that one? Paul Giamatti and Paul <laughs> Giamatti. <laughs> um where are you going? <laughs> I, of him playing almost like a clumps where he plays both Ma and Pa. I would love that. Um, no, I honestly, I'm just trying to think of who gives the energy. I, it, it would never happen because people are going to be like, stop changing races and stuff, even though Clark is adopted. I honestly think the energy that Octavia Spencer gives would have been really like as fun kind of as a Ma. But I think Julianne Moore, to be honest with you, after seeing Julianne her in May, December, choice. I thought she would be a great Ma. Uh, a mock hit to be great honest. With you. I don't know about Pa off the top of my head though. Yeah, yeah, great. I'm gonna choice. go uh, for Pa. I'm gonna go Brennan Fraser because uh, oh, I think the paternalness doesn't get shown a lot, and he was on with Superman, so I love that like bit of love for the lore. Uh, and then I'm gonna go Carla Gugino for Ma Kent. Yeah, well, both both good. I would have said that if he wasn't already cast in Green Lantern, it probably would have made Nathan Fillion as Pa Kent. But uh. Mm. That's interesting. It'd probably be somebody that he that he knows. It'd be hilarious if it's Stallone because his buddy was, was Stallone. The 80-year-old Pa Kent. Uh, yeah, what are you doing? Get a dog. Uh, uh, tractor. Uh, 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 oh, wait a minute. Dog flying tuna? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Next one here. Jay Blink. They didn't do Power Rangers Final Draft. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. So they, they worked on the script. Someone else brushed it up, and maybe that's right. why it's there. Their yeah. finest work. It's still their finest work. And I didn't mind that movie. I didn't mind that movie. I, I haven't seen it, but I've heard only good things. Yeah, Universally no, no, it's, good it's things. It's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Renee Reyes, have you all watched the Jonathan Majors interview about his side of the story? If so, what are your thoughts? You know what? I, I, I did not watch that follow-up. Did you guys watch it? You, Winston, did you see it? And what are your thoughts on it overall? <laughs> that good, huh? Here's the point. Here's, <laughs> here's the, the problem. Cut away. His, the his, cut away his, Winston <laughs> laughing. <laughs> his... There were there were two issues here. The first was to have, of all people, ABC, a.k.a. Disney, be the ones to do the interview. It literally felt, and I made a joke about this earlier, it felt like he was doing a job exit interview for them, like uh, yeah. like live for the rest of the world. But the fact that he opens up just like kind of crying, and it didn't feel like he's crying because he's actually upset. It felt like he was crying because he was acting. It was one of those yeah. things that I was like, it felt almost... Like it would have been better if he had just not, not yeah, done felt like a performance. Well, if he just not done also, anything. But remember, didn't he do something like before the trial started? Wasn't it like there was like a fight that was yes, happening? Yes, and, yes. and then he like he, he, ran, like, he ran up, he's like, Hey, no, we don't have he to broke fight. it up. It was like still, it, it still randomly dressed. his was recording it, and it was like, it's like, dude, it's still it, dressed it, like a civil rights leader, be like, Hey, right, there's a better way, ladies. We ain't got to do this. You, you, I, I think <laughs> I think you're so I've got a theory about that. Yeah, go ahead. That so that was clearly a Hollywood high school, and I think because of the proximity of Hollywood high school to In and Out, I think dude was just having his double double and literally looked across. You the think that was real? You think was I real? do because I of which high school it was. Literally, yeah, if you've ever bro, eaten it In and Out, people are fighting Hollywood was, high was, school was, all the time. Bro. Like the, the camera work, everything, <laughs> all of it. Someone was it. filming with an open yeah. laptop, which but I think it's hilarious. Is, but this is why this is why it felt staged as fuck. Because yeah. on top of that, this man can't keep Coretta Scott King's name out his fucking mouth. Did he say it so again? It, in the, did he say it again in that? In the interview, in the interview, oh, he in goes, interview. he goes, he goes. Well, in the interview, he goes. So yeah, you know, like, what, so what's it like with 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 Megan Good? He's like, she's incredible. She's a rock. She's she's like my Coretta. She just. Yes. Oh, I don't I don't yeah. know what I would do without her. She's just yeah. oh. like he really th this man really thinks that he's Martin Luther King, genuinely. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy to me to keep seeing him do that. But well, well, there you go. There's your thoughts on it. Um Galagos, the good Galagos. Hey fellas, the Sony verse going the way of the dark universe, Snyderverse, uh 2011 DC verse. Yes, Green Lantern was the start by Venom 3 release. Cheers. I mean, I, I do think, dude, that they need they just need, as we said earlier. They need new people in that position in the same way that I've made it 
clear that I think that, and it looks like Kathleen Kennedy has done that with like putting Filoni more in charge of the creative head over there. Sony needs that. They need somebody who they don't need all the executives who don't know this world. It would make make it Lord and Miller. Make it Lord and Miller. Let Lord and Miller start being in charge. Put why aren't they in charge of the live action verse? Put them. I, in I, I don't think they want to. They don't want to have to. I mean, I think they would do a great job, but I think that would limit them from making any of their own stuff. Like <laughs> I dump a, a a truckload of money in, in their backyard in the same way you did James Gunn and the same way you did Feige, and I think they'll be all right with that. I mean, I, I would love to see that because I love the characters and I love those guys. Yeah. I just don't know if they want to only live in that space forever. Uh, all right, Galagos, follow-up. Folks complained about the hours of TV to catch up before the Marvels, but they don't complain about the same for Deadpool and X-Men 97. Why? Um, well, let's see. So when you talk about for Deadpool, I mean, that's the two movies beforehand, right? So two movies. It, I, first of all, a full series as far as two movies is different. I think. Well, it's also conceptually all the X-Men movies, which is like six films, because like yeah. all the X-Men are getting their send-off. So I feel like it's going to be like eight movies. Oh, right. Yeah. It, well, it's way more than that. You got you throw in. Did you already meant? Did, did you already mention Daredevil? And I'm losing my mind. But like, oh you, you no, got, no, yeah, Fox and and in and, the, and both of the Fantastic Four movies, and yeah. like you, you literally have to go down the entire Fox universe uh, line of movies mm -hmm. because it'll probably all be relevant. I wouldn't even be surprised if they go ahead and sneak um. Uh, oh my God, uh, Tyler Tyler Hitch back in there because I know he's uh, trying to also rebuild up his star power after John Carter, which I didn't think it was a bad movie, but it obviously bombed. Yeah. I wouldn't even be surprised if they throw him in there. Live you know? chat, would you be interested in us doing some uh, Fox rewatches like we used yeah. to? Because uh, yeah. live chat, let us know. Because I'd be curious. I haven't watched Fantastic Four in years. In a long, yeah. we should do something. We talked actually. We did. I'm glad you brought that up because we talked about that for sure. Um, but Daredevil I also, director's cut, Coolio for life. I love that subplot. But Cal, <laughs> you know, the other thing, dude, is that, and the honest answer is because there's more excitement behind both those other projects. There's just more excitement for it. So when you look at the Marvels and it's like, if you're not excited about it, and then you're like, well, I have to do all this other work to get there. But if you're excited about the movie, it's like, oh, I, to, to, like Koi said, let's go rewatch some of this stuff if it's going to pan out because I'm excited about Deadpool 3. If you're not excited. And nostalgia is such a strong driving yeah. force. Like yeah. nostalgia is a hell of a drug. And 20 it years is. of nostalgia versus, oh, that thing that just came out, I'm kind of invested in. Right. So I just don't think people were that excited about the Marvels. Gilberto Padilla going to watch madam web just to see how bad it is good luck hmm. good luck to you it's it's just like i said it's just it's just dull um mild mannered comic nerd thank you mild mannered comic nerd. very kind of you hey guys do you think that they can remake this movie and use the correct story and characters like ezekiel and morton with spider-man and give it a horror vibe like in the comic when i read the comics I always felt like a horror movie yeah it seemed like it could go in that direction if they knew what they were doing but i think that What's gonna, it's never gonna happen because Sony's just not gonna let it out of their, um, I guess, pun intended web, right? Because they're gonna do, um, they're gonna do, they're gonna hold on to this IP, man, because they need to. They don't have anything else. What would be best is if somehow MCU could get involved in it and could the MCU could get their property back. And then that's when you'd start to see this stuff. But no, I don't think, because, and now, unfortunately, the name is so tainted because of this movie. It's going to be a long time before they bring these characters back. Do you guys disagree? No, I, I'm right there with you. I think you, th there is, you need to distance yourself from it for a while. And, yeah. I, and I think that like, even if they do get the green, the green light for it, you might see uh, Madame Webb like somewhere in like a kind of a secret war situation. If you are like, if you're, if you're taking that whole kind of Secret Wars element that they did at the, I'm sure you remember this quite at the end of uh, the Spider-Man 90s cartoon, mm -hmm. and he was kind of leading his own, he was the one kind of in charge of the heroes versus the villains and all that. Like, if, if that's what you're going for, um, I could see her maybe making an appearance in that way, right. but you you have to keep distance from this. If, if this movie is going to continue to go with the way that it's going, then you, yeah. you can't. Yeah, they're going to put a lot of space between this and that. And I, I think the Ezekiel stuff, they also made him a full-on villain like in madam web he was just a bad guy ezekiel is a conflicted figure in the comic books which allows for more nuance and more hard yeah. elements because it's not just mustache twirling uh i love your mark bagley art you clearly know the comic books that sort of nuance isn't allowed in this in this writing style like and that's that's oh. not going to work yeah unfortunately galagos here's another five thanks man please do more live shows always great to catch you all here 
So, you know, we normally tape on Thursdays. And one of the reasons that we do um, Thursdays also is make sure patrons get Capes and Cows early because patrons always get it either 24 hours or 12, uh, 12 hours earlier. So that's one of the reasons there is talk about potentially doing um, live in the next uh, six, seven months on Fridays. But we're, we're discussing it. But right now it's um, it's going to be it's going to be the way it is for, for patrons and stuff, too. Um, OK, next one, Carlton Rudder. What's up, man? First Capes and Cow Super Chat. Thank you very much. Superman Legacy and Fantastic Four come out two weeks apart in July 2025. Do you, who do you think will win the box office war? Well, I think that Fantastic Four will move. Um, not because they're scared of Superman, um, but I think because they just, it looks like they're just starting to get filming now. There was some delays and stuff from the strike. So I think that they'll move, but I don't think it's going to, if they did go to head, head to head, well, what comes out first? Is it Superman first? Superman and then Superman gets a, two, gets a two week lead. Um, I mean, that's, that's a hard question. And that's really going to, the answer of who's going to win is I'm going to give a safe answer and it just depends on quality. It depends on quality because they're both big IPs. Um, if Superman is better than Fantastic Four, then Superman. It's going to be a lot of July because the week before all that's uh, Jurassic World 7. Mm -hmm. So it's oh. going to be like Ju July 3rd or 4th is Jurassic World and then Superman the 11th and then the 25th is this. I don't know where else Fantastic Four can go. It's already been yeah. pushed so long. Yeah. Uh, I don't see it as a winter movie. So I, I if it stays, that's just a, a $3 billion July. I, I honestly, after what I know that they weren't, the movies had nothing to do with each other, but after seeing what we saw with Barbenheimer and then with their talks that they're now about to start reprinting the, the Marvel DC crossovers, why you wouldn't necessarily say, you know what, F it, let's actually lean on each other right now and like make it a fantastic legacy or like, or like, or super four or whatever you want to make your little mashup and let the two of them have it be the battle of the two i honestly think that anybody that likes superhero films especially if they're both good will be there for both and you'll be in there you know dressed like the thing with the superman emblem on you and stuff like i, I think that that would be the way to go personally and uh -huh. i would be there for jurassic super four and watch all three in a day after <laughs> seeing them i think that'd be great we'll see uh mild manner comic nerd is madame webb better or worse than the Clooney batman movie also who wins in a fight omni man or homelander Thanks, guys. I'll let you guys answer that second part. The first part is, do I think it's better or worse? Different, because what's what's more boring? Madam Web. You can't call Batman or Robin boring. It's not boring. It's just uh, it's just terrible, and it's and it's goofy, and it's it it is. We did a rewatch. It is fun to rewatch, especially that's where we got the "I wish I knew" line out of that. Um, <laughs> so that alone is is pretty perfect. Um, uh, so that there's some funny stuff in them that, that that movie is it's so bad it's good movie this movie, yeah. this movie is boring so but well, what's a better movie like over like you know there, there is the if, if which one could you maneuver into an actual film if you had better dialogue and other things too madam web probably you could probably maneuver it into if you if you got rid of those writers and you put an actual reason this is the story we want to tell can we actually get some real people who care about this thing and maneuver this particular story that we have now with these actors? I think you have a better shot with that as opposed to what they wanted to do with that Joel Schumacher. It wasn't his fault, but that wasn't, that was a direct, that, that wasn't his fault. That was not the director's fault. The director was told to say, make toys come to life. That's what he was told to do. Uh, uh, I'm going to go Homelander. Oh, not okay. even close. It's Omni Man, dude. You wow. got to remember. You got to remember the Viltrumites are sitting here murdering each other left and right, and and you have multiple situations where Omni Man has been able to take on people within his weight class. Whereas Homeland, who who has challenged Homelander? Not a I, single, not a single person. And the minute you started getting somebody like Soldier Boy that was on a, a comparable level of strength, he was like, oh. Oh, I'm a bitch. Oh, yeah, but there, oh. There's a reason. There's a reason why for that, and I don't want to spoil it. There's a reason why. There was there was more. There's more mental stuff going on with that battle too, though. And I don't, I can't speak enough for Omni Man. Which but. is which is which is fine. But I'm. I, it's literally when you think about how Omni Man is essentially Zod, but they've had their mm -hmm. powers forever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not like I just got to Earth or whatever. I honestly think that Omni Man would wipe the floor with him. I huh? think just uh, strength. I agree with you, but I think Homelander's way more manipulative, and he would find ways to They're break both. Omni Man. So, both. like, I I get that Omni Man's manipulative, but I'm giving Homelander a, a bit more callous tacticalness. Well, they're both Amazon, so maybe it'll happen. Uh, <laughs> Tommy M. Dawood, Koi, any news on AOS characters returning? What's that? Oh, Agents of Shield. 
Oh, okay. Um, I, you know, there's a rumor every other week. Uh, I actually was not that big of an Agents of Shield guy. The tone was a little too network TV sitcomy for me. Winston likes it, and uh, I, I found it a little cloying. Yeah. So, and, and it, it just like a lot of shows, it had a lot of good and a lot of bad. Um, but I think that you you definitely want to bring uh, Daisy back if you can. Uh, I thought that I'm the actress's name is escaping me at this exact moment. Um, oh my god. Um, Chloe she Bennett. was great on Thank Dave. you, Chloe Bennett. Chloe Bennett. Chloe Bennett. Yeah. Chloe she's, Bennett been was, she's been rumored forever to come back. And she's kind of teased some stuff herself yeah. And, yeah. and whatnot. So I genuinely hope that they at least bring her back. I think you could probably mm -hmm. miss everybody else, but I think that she would be a nice addition to have Quake uh, brought in the fold. All right. Uh, Nightfall Noir. Big thing is the promo code for Blue Chew discount is just so hilarious. I had to get it. Great. It's good marketing. Um, I love everything you do, Christian. Thank you. P.S. Aliens are real. Well, I think we're going to get some more stuff. We're going to get some more conversation, man, every Tuesday. We had a great conversation on Tuesday with Steve Bassett. Riley and I sat down with him in studios, the first uh, UFO lobbyist in Washington ever. And he is going to be sitting down. He talks to us, and some of the stuff he says will blow your mind. So that's Tuesday. Oh, I almost forgot. As far as that Omniman uh, Homelander yeah. fight, there's actually a very uh, popular, very, very popular channel here on YouTube uh, called Death Battle. And they actually broke okay. this down. Oh, and they, they broke down exactly oh, wow. why Homelander oh, wow. mops the floor. <laughs> I mean, mean like, you know, why Omniman know. wipes the floor with, with, uh, with Homelander. All right. Uh, Ryan Clem Barnes, the MCU has lost my trust. Ant Man was my favorite sub franchise, and Quantum Mania ruined it by not having Luis and um, treating the characters as functions of a greater Marvel story. I don't care about. I happen to look. I I, I, I stick by the fact that I like the idea that they did a science fiction thing, and I think that the last uh, I don't know last three quarters, oh last not three quarters, last quarter of that movie is really not good, and the ending is ridiculous. Um, but I liked the the science fiction place they went with it but i don't i don't disagree with you that by going in such a different direction from what the first two movies were it's jarring to the audience that was already fans of it so um okay as we continue to go down thank you for that by the way we have mild mannered again uh for you winston haha uh -huh, paul giamatti is doc ock hey not bad. Arms i have i got some not arms. bad <laughs> Well, okay. Did you guys see the thing I tweeted at you about that 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 particular panel where oh, what's up, Spider Kitty? Um, that particular panel where where Doom was about to go save the world and and Reed calls in. And he goes, "Hey, man, I just want to wish you good luck." What do you mean luck? I don't need luck. I'm Doom. It's gonna work. He's like, uh, "Yeah, it'll probably work." What do you mean probably? I'm goddamn Doom. Like, and just that that the one thing that I'm that is sticking in my head because that panel does speak to kind of what yeah. I'm talking about. And I was teasing about Giamatti, but like. There is something sort of there. I, I would want somebody. You need to be able to have somebody that is such a genius. It is so arrogant that it ends up becoming comical at times when it like nobody's actually messing with you. <laughs> just wow. you know. Yeah. Um, all right. This is that Predineski. When Wolverine shows up at the end of the trailer, there's a Secret Wars comic on the ground with Doctor Doom on the cover. Is there? Did you see that, Coy? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. That's uh, Secret okay. Wars number five from the Jonathan Hickman run, the more oh, recent Secret okay. Wars. And that's the one with uh, Emperor God Doom, which is why mm -hmm. I think he might show up in a post credit scene oh, there. That's why you said it. Okay. And that's the one with the, 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 there's literally a bottle of that soda Stan Lee gets poisoned with in the first Hulk with Ed Norton right. on top of the Secret Wars comic. Um, I see the questions that are still coming in. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. And we'll, like I said, we'll be here until the last one is answered. So, Galagos, Winston, yell at your neighbor, not my effing tempo. <laughs> Great movie. Great movie. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Nightfall Noir again. Thank you, everybody. Pedro, great actor, not for Reed. Feels forced to me. I, I can understand that. We've talked about that many times. It just depends. Uh, look, he's a great actor. There's a we want to see the chemistry with him and Vanessa Kirby. And I I don't know if you ever get the real story as far as why he was cast. Maybe it's because you got a great audition. Maybe it was because of the rumors. Who knows? Either way, it's not going to hurt the movie. It'll help the movie. The guy's a great actor. So, um, okay, as we, I think that we, we have one more, maybe. Hold on a second. Let me see. Oh, no, we got uh, two more. So, Paige Chaudhry. Hello, do you all think that Shang-Chi Shang could come back? Where is he? That's a great he's, question. He has a torn, he has a torn. Yeah, uh, healing. he's a uh, healing. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that, now that I, now that I like heard about that, because I think you mentioned that l uh, last week, Koi. Yeah, yeah, and, like, he was at a charity thing on crutches, and I was like, oh, well, that, yeah. that would do it. If now now knowing that, I I guarantee you they were probably like, well shit. Gotta and they push just put that him on the back burner. Yeah, much. well he was but he was already on the back burner. 
He was on the but back. I, but I but I could see if they were gonna find ways to try and shoehorn him in, whether yeah. it be like an appearance or whatever. Yeah, they they were like to they put him on the on the bench again, unless they unless you know you you he's sitting there <gasps> talking he's sitting there talking with Wong about something like in a room. You know, you could do something like that. Oh, Christian, he's Derrick Rose. I really hope yeah. he's not like full on <laughs> Derrick Rose, and it was just the oh no, maybe I don't know. Uh, so who knows where he is? Marmoth haunts best thing that you three can say about Madam Web. Fair enough. Um, Dakota Johnson is a, is is I think a good actress, even in general, and I think she's very attractive. I think that was a great outfit she wore at the premiere. So that's two things. Um, they uh, Adam Scott is always nice to see um and i do think that out of the three girls in that one i can't remember shoot i can't remember the the one isabella girl. merced yes isabella yeah. merced. she was the best she i thought she gave a very strong performance um out of the three so there you go uh i'm gonna go with it's a movie uh my my friend is in it and uh you didn't even see it sydney sweeney is hot there you go perfect uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Adam Scott is a great inspired choice to inspire some of the dialogue he didn't get to deliver, but was implied mm -hmm. he did. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a good character casting choice in a movie of questionable ones, uh, and I think that it showed us. Uh, honestly, it showed me that Adam Scott can really be exceptional in anything. It's like if yeah. Adam Scott was in the room, I'd be like, you know, he gets it. Like, yeah. there's something so good about him against all odds in the movie that Adam Scott, Ryan. Clem Barnes, the only franchise I'll always show up for Star Wars. Koi, thank you for defending my favorite film, The Last Jedi. Koi not only defends it, Koi likes to cause fights because of it. In the best since, uh, Empire, man, I think it's easily the best Star Wars film since. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, you don't want to hear my thoughts. <laughs> I like I like a movie that uh, that actually has something to say, and isn't just a color by color sure. remake. I got something to say. All right, so Andrew <laughs> Andrew Carnes, who do you think Gunn's first main Justice League team ends up being? I mean, it's got to be the the normal. It's got to be Wonder Woman, uh, Superman, Batman, Green Lantern. So, right? are we implying that in Legacy that that's the Justice Society that they've cast essentially? Because we already have note that I guess he is kind of balancing between being Superman, being Clark, and kind of having his Justice family one way or the other. So, are we are we. Uh, uh, implying that that's the justice society maybe i wouldn't i would assume they wouldn't want to go that way because that would take away a lot of any history they could do so mm -hmm. i think this will be a justice league uh but i i don't think i think wonder woman will join it okay mm -hmm. uh andrew corns who do you think you just you just you just oh, did, that one. One. did that one sorry um sorry moving down moving down yeah because i'm curious how they're going to do that and when they're going to announce i mean they, they've got time you know they've got yeah. a lot of time, and i hope they actually give the time so Jim, when given the reactions to Dune 2 and the cast and the amount of the hype worldwide for this movie, I think it'll make $1 billion. It will be a must-see in theaters. I hope you're right. I have said that I don't think so, but that basing it off the first movie, but first movie was during the pandemic. The first movie was people going, what is this all about? I don't know. And then people watching it going, whoa, this is like incredible. And then Winston and I saw it again in, in IMAX. And it's just, it's, it, it, feels to me in the same way that i feel when i watch avatar like this is just something that needs to be seen in the theater like you just you have to there. and i had heard that it was incredible and now the reactions are kind of i'm going to see it on tuesday i can't wait um so a billion i still think is tough i still think it's tough because science fiction sometimes is, is tough to do that i mean but then you say avatar you know um but i will uh i'm gonna say i don't think it gets there but i will hope that you are right and i am wrong I think it'll hit 800. I hope it hits a billion. Me too. All right. Um, Andrew Smith, can we get a Jeff Snyder verse? God help us all. Woo! I mean, we, I think we get it. I think we get it on tw on Twitter. I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's established, and there's a premium version. Yeah, I would get. There, his there's already the Snyder cut. <laughs> but I would get his newsletter though, because his newsletter, that guy. I mean, he's he's firing on a whole other level right now with scoops. Uh, Nightfall Noir, Kung Fu Panda 4, and Lord of the Rings animated movie this year. Those are also movies that could do very, very well for sure. Those are really good movies. I mean, I really think I've, I, you know, I, I originally I was I was concerned about it, but the more I'm hearing people really hype about Kung Fu Panda, Kung Fu Panda 4, I don't know, it might it might pull like seven or eight. Yeah, um, someone's sometimes people just make things up. Someone said, Well, my reaction for Barbie was the same as Madam Web. No, 
I said that Barbie is a really well-made movie and it's a good movie. Just it didn't land for me, but I can. But the directing is fantastic. Greta Gerwig is amazing. The performances were out of control, uh, incredible. The music was really good. I just didn't love it. But it's a really good movie. It's put together really well. That's not the same reaction as this stinks. It's bad writing. It's the, the, the executives don't get it. So, what are you talking about? Don't stop making things up. Renee Reyes, Padme and Leia, marry one, force choke one. Go. Um, wait, 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 wait. So either either the, the the mom or the daughter, you you marry one and you kill the other. Jesus. Well, it doesn't say kill. It just says force choke. Force I'm choke. assuming that you're gonna force choke to the end. There, I, I don't. Didn't say that. Didn't say okay. it at the end. You know, you're right. You're right. I'm making assumptions. If we're gonna call people out for that, so you go, so you, so you can go kinky with force mm. choke. <laughs> And remember, remember, so here's, here's, I'm going to go kinky with it. And here's the thing, because it doesn't say who's force choking who. I'm going to say, I'll marry Padme and let Leia force choke me. How about Ooh. that? Like that answer? Yeah. You're not my dad. <laughs> Weird. All right, here we go. Let's get, I think, I think we got one more. Uh, this is a really nice one. Thank you. It's first Nate rate. Wow. First rate Nate is the best. Thank you, man. Just started watching One Piece last night with my six-year-old, and he didn't want to stop watching, but watched three straight and look forward to watching more. I love that show. I really do. I cannot wait for it to come back. Cannot wait for it. Oh, we do have more. Sorry. I cannot wait for it to come back. Nate, uh, yeah, man. That is uh it is a really great show, and I'm glad that your your little one is watching it too. It's it's have you you guys both of you guys haven't watched it yet, huh? Jeff Ward from uh, uh AOS is in it though. Agents Did of you? Shields, Jeff Ward's in uh One Piece. You didn't watch it yet, Winston? When, I can't believe that you're not watching it. You would love that show. You would love that show. It's so good. It's I mean, I've I've said the same thing about you finishing Invincible. So how about we do this? I will go watch One Piece and you go finish Invincible, and then you can talk. I'll get to it. All right. So here's <laughs> exactly Pat Matt 11, Pedro Pascal for Pa Kent. Here's he's not that big. <laughs> uh Dirty Mother tells in Ray Fiends is Dr. Doom. He just <sighs> I think Ray Fiends about 10, 15 years ago dude I, years ago. yeah yes and i and i just realized this and it would actually make me really sad it's really sad to say this and again i know people would lose their shit because oh why you may you know race switching mom pa can't but i honestly think if you would put um carl weathers and octavia spencer as mom pa that actually would have been a really endearing oh, like couple carl, to raise up. yeah uh night fall more less than a week from bad batch and airbender i'm worried about I'm worried about Airbender because from what I heard from the regular fans now they've changed up the lore and they've changed up things that they didn't need to change dude, up. That's part one, dude. But the fact the fact that 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 you had Soka who his his one of his main character arcs is that he's incredibly sexist and he just thinks that women can't do things and they're like oh we took that out because it's not but he gets better by the time the show is over he has so much respect yeah, it's like ladies are badass. That's people being scared and it's too, that's mm -hmm. so that's part one. Um, part two, it's funny. Bad Batch has been sitting in my inbox for about a week and a half, two weeks. I haven't touched it. I haven't touched it. And it's like, you know, people are getting, oh, man, uh, Saj Ventress, she's in it. Yeah, right. she's supposed to be dead. She's supposed to be dead. I saw it in the book. And now she's alive. Why? But I'll, I'm going to watch it. I'll, I'll see. And I hope that I, and I'll, I'll be the first to say, oh, man, because I, I like the second half of the last season. I just, Bad Batch to me just, mm -mm. um. I think that might be the last one, guys. No, nope. uh, okay, I'm I'm wrong. Rene Reyes, do you think Palpatine will show up an acolyte? No, he's too he's too young. I think he's too young, right? It's supposed to, well, it depends. Is it 50 years before or 100 years before? Some said 50, some say 100. If it's 100, he's too he's too young. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't baby Grogu's that. nemesis, baby I, Palpatine somehow returns. Yoda will. Yoda will be in it. Miguel says uh, Zion, 25 percent Howard Stark. And over under 25% Howard Stark and Peggy will appear in Fantastic Four since it'll be set in the 60s. And y'all think that Bandaras as Galactus will show up. I definitely think Galactus is going to show up. I don't think it'll be Bandaras. I think it's going to be Javier Bardem. Um, but I do... Th the Howard Stark Peggy question is a great question. What do you guys oh, think? Oh, yeah. I think that's... I think it, it's going to be Howard Stark, Peggy, and maybe even... Um... Uh, Hank Pym. I think we might get a DH oh, wow. uh, Michael Douglas, who always looks amazing. I that think we're going to get some throwback stuff. That would be great. Uh, Andrew Carnes, in X-Men Days of Future Past, a top 10 comic book movie? I say yes. I just watched it recently. It's pretty damn good. 
It's pretty it's great. It's really good. It's really good. I'd have to go and really look into it and you know put together my list and see which ones I think. But I don't. I, I top ten list is tough. I, I immediately think of Dark Knight. You know, um, Dark I have, Knight, Iron Man. Yeah, uh, and I get Infinity nostalgic. War. Yeah, I get nostalgic though, dude. Like when I start to put certain movies in there. To, to me, there's certain comic book movies that you guys remember as kids that like stand out to you. Superman Two is like an all timer for me. And you guys, yeah, are, like, okay. I mean, The Crow is in my top ten. Yeah, a lot right. of people don't even talk about right. The Crow. So right. So uh, that was it, guys. Uh, you know, overall, well, do you think as far as do you, what would you say top ten for you guys on those two movies on that movie? Uh, Days of Future Past was probably top twenty. They changed a lot unnecessarily right. yeah. and they rushed a bit, but I do love it. It's just probably probably top twenty. I, I love it. I, I I can't give that answer off the top of my head because we know how ad infinitum number of comic book movies they are. But I I would say I'm fond enough of it that I'll agree with Coy in top twenty. But I would have to really look at it. All right. Well, guys, thank you for joining us here today on this special live edition of Capes and Cows Big Thing. Um, if you want to see the episode that Coy and I did yesterday, the or that Coy really did, as I just stood there and and was on perfect. Thank you, Cat. Uh, <laughs> So go on over to Patreon, check that out. It's over there. It's patreon.com slash the big thing show. If you want to support the show, you're able to support the show. One of our wonderful sponsors, we put the links in the description right now and I'll also pin it as the top comment. So thank you for all of that. Thank you for everybody who was throwing in the comments in the chat and the super chat, everything if you're watching on a replay. But I want to thank my pals here today, both Winston and Coy. Winston, where can they find you? You can find me at the swaggy blurred on all platforms, man. Definitely come over and say what's up. Uh, trying to hit some markers on them on uh them subscriptions and whatnot over here on youtube and on tiktok so please definitely do that and i'm, I'm super excited man just in the fact that like uh i've actually been working on a, a very personal project of mine right now i've been uh in the studio cooking um and it will actually be uh the first time that i'm directing a film so uh you know uh it's definitely something i'm super excited about there'll be some more news about that as things continue to go on but uh until then i'll see you guys the next time we're on capes cows Koi, where can they find you and your cat, Spidey? Uh, Spidey Cat will be here at my home. I'll be on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, at Koi Jondro. And uh, I'm really, really excited for, like, we're about to kick off the year, I guess, you know, for me with Dune. So I'm really excited to be doing more reviews and more conversations and stuff like this. I feel like we're, like, right there on the edge. There's before Dune and after Dune, and this year starts soon. All right, guys, you heard it. Thank you for joining us once again. We currently, right now, if you're brand new to this channel, we are at 127,814 at the moment, trying to get to 128 first and hitting 200,000. So thank you for joining, being part of it. Thank you for Winston and Coy. Really appreciate you. Appreciate everybody being here there today. Capes and cows, we're us, you're you, and we'll see you later.